When you're beginning your advocacy campaign and you want to support your loved one in prison and argue why he should not be in prison and why this COVID pandemic is really threatening his security, you want to get the most credible sources possible. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a couple that I found that I think will be very helpful to you. One of them is from the United States House of Representatives on the Committee on the Judiciary. And so this is a letter by Gerald Nadler from New York who is writing to the Attorney General. This letter was written, as you can see, on March the 19th. And if you just let it play slowly, you could pause the video when necessary to pull some really salient points out of here that you could use in your advocacy campaign. So the, uh, the, the congressman is writing to the, to the Attorney General, talking to him, first of all, about how dangerous this epidemic is, also talking about how uh, exposing people in prison to this epidemic can really threaten all of society. There's 175,000 people in federal prison and there are hundreds of more than 100 facilities across the country. And the data shows, according to this uh, letter that he wrote, that the BOP is really not well suited to handle such a pandemic. In fact, nobody in society has been ready, which is why more than 90% of the population has been put on some type of stay or home order or work from home orders. But with regard to people in prison, you really want to cite some of the important language that's in this letter. I certainly would be doing that. Um, if I were preparing a, an advocacy package for me, if our team were working with you, we would be using this kind of language here to show that um, you know people 50 years old or older, um, if they suffer from chronic illnesses, if asthma, cancer, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, HIV, or any of these, it makes them even more vulnerable to the, to the, uh, to the virus. We'd wanna, you could pull some of the statutory authority over here that provides uh, the, the Bureau of Prisons with the, 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 the law that they need to, to transition. Um, I mean, but we, we know that there's, that there's a lot of information out there <clears throat> that can be helpful to you. You just wanna have as much as possible for your advocacy campaigns, including this particular sentence here where the Congressman is recommending that any person with 36 months or less remaining on their sentence, <clears throat> in many cases, it's, it's appropriate for that person to transition to home confinement during this pandemic. So this was one of the letters that I wanted to show you. I had a second one that I found, and uh, you'll be able to just watch as it scrolls across the screen. And that one is the um, from the Federal Defenders. Now, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Federal Defenders because they invest so much time and energy in helping people uh, that are exposed to problems with the criminal justice system. And, and here they're, they're, they're picking up where we expect them to do so, where they're writing letters and advocating on behalf of people in prison to the Attorney General, to the Deputy Attorney General at the Department of Justice, and also to the Director of the Bureau of Prisons, Michael Carvajal. Um, and, and so this letter provides a lot of very valuable insight that you can use to uh, strengthen and bolster your advocacy campaign. Again, these are camp this is information that we would definitely be using for anybody that works with our team. Um, but we encourage you to figure out how can you best use this information to build the most effective advocacy campaign for you. Um, so we encourage you to scroll through the entire letter. You could pause the video. I, I don't have a way to upload a PDF for you. So I just got the letter on there. You could, um, I know that we've got some of our branding on there. Um, it's because a lot of people plagiarize our work and we want them to do their own work. Um, but you could pause the, pause the letter where you want to make sure that you can read it. And we encourage you to, to use this in your advocacy campaigns as you, um, as you move forward. And you may even want to reach out to the uh, federal defenders in your district. Um, but again, if you want a team of advocates working for you, we do encourage you to reach out to our team. Um, but again, if you just want to do it yourself, we are providing you the, the resources that we would be using. It's just work. You've got to be willing to do the work to get the outcome that you want, and we encourage you to do so. Thank you.